Hi there, Kim Kunkel here, owner and designer over at easydigitals.com, time-saving backgrounds and templates for photographers. Today, I have a three-part series for you. In part one, I'm going to extract a player from the background. In part two, I'm going to go over the layers of the Victory Light set. And in part three, I'm actually going to add the player to the background. Extractions. Removing a person from the background is the number one question that I get. People just seem to always have confusion about it, how to make it look realistic. So I'm going to go over the steps that I use and hopefully it'll help you out. So let's go ahead and get started. This is my photo right here that I'm going to remove the background from. And I'm going to select the quick selection tool, which is my favorite tool to use to remove the background. The first thing I'm going to do is make a copy. So I'm just going to drag it down onto this little square and make a copy and turn off my original. And I'm just going to start dragging over this with my mouse. I'm not using a pen tool or anything like that. You can have this as big as you want right now. If you, once you start to go in to get the smaller details, you might want to make this smaller, but I'm making it larger and smaller with my right and left brackets. And I'm just roughly selecting everything. I'm going to do control Z. Every time that I select too much, I'm going to do control Z to undo it because the selection tool has a memory. And when you select over something by accident and then you swipe back, it remembers. And so it kind of tries to help you out by doing that. And I'm just going to keep going over this and I may end up speeding it up just a little bit so it's not too boring for you, but I definitely will let you know all the details. And one thing for sure that you want to be sure of is that you have sharp edges on your player. This picture was taken, it looks like they had side lights and a front light. I can see the light on the sides and when I zoom in, I can see that he has a light in the middle of his, his eye. It looks like it had two side lights and a light in the front. This is what makes it a perfect candidate for victory lights. And I'm just zooming in and just grabbing these parts. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the more precise you can get it, the better you're going to be later. I'm pressing my Alt key and I'm just going to select in here. This is so blown out um, on the sides of his uniform that it's really hard to see. And I even when I was testing this, I even brought in a levels. Um, let me fill it with white. And just to show you how blown out it is, I really couldn't get a lot of detail out of that area. But this is a way that you can maybe help yourself to see where it ends. I'm going to come back up here to select, reselect. And I'm going to continue here. So it's helping me a little bit. So make sure you have a sharp edge on your photo. Turn this off for a minute. Alt and take this away. Bring this back. It's hard to see what was going on there. Oops.
I'm going to turn that back off. Now, as you can see, making this levels layer does help quite a bit in finding the areas that need to be selected. So the next step is going to be view fit on screen. And now I get to select if you, if you are not, if you like go to the zoom tool or something, you're going to have to come back to this refine edge to be able to, I mean the quick selection tool to be able to get to this. So I, I like this overlay to be like this pinkish red. Um, marching ants doesn't do a lot for me. Black's not bad. White's not bad. And then, so you can choose which one you like. I'll do overlay right now. And then I like to use this and push the smart radius, push it over and then see how much that helps. You can take your little magnifying glass and zoom in and see what it's doing. And you can take your brush and fix things. But I can't decide if I want it that much. So let me look at this. Okay, and then we look at the rest of it. Brush over this part. Hmm. I guess I'll have to fix that later if I want to. Okay, I think that looks pretty good, so I'm just going to click OK. Now I can click the mask tool. And if I want to, I can duplicate it. And let's call this one player. And call this one shadow. Now if I wanted to, I could come in with the shadow layer view. Now this one, I'm gonna just cons think of this for the shadow. So I don't even need to most of the body for this. So I'm gonna take the mask and I'm gonna fill it with black. So my black is on top here. So if I press Alt backspace, it fills it with black. So my player is there and this will be my shadow layer. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna add back in Control D to deselect some of the feet. I mean, some of the, the uh, shadow. So I'm gonna change this to white and I'm just gonna bring in a little bit of shadow right here in case we need it. We'll have to decide this later if this is the way we wanna make the shadow. And I could be using a pen tool, which might be easier than using my mouse for this. Okay, so that's my shadow layer and this is my player layer. So now I'm ready to take this into the template and start working with it.